So welcome to We Figure This Out. In this little series of videos, we're going to talk about things we sell in a store that we may not know a lot about and you may not know a lot about. So together, we're going to figure it out through research and trial and error. Now we're here with Paul. Paul's a regular on our Wednesday in-store build sessions, and he also runs the vent build uh, sessions at the Uplands Family Resource Center once a month. When is yep. that? It's the first Saturday of every month. So if you mind to check that out, check out the uh, vet build online. There's information about it, or you can contact us through the store. We have some information here on how to get a hold of Paul and his group. Today, Paul is going to show us about wet pallets, how they work, what they do, and if they're right for you. So take it away, Paul. Okay. So the uh, Stay Wet Handy Pallet is this, and it's for uh, keeping your water-soluble paints uh, moist longer. Uh, rather than using the, you know, sort of like the little cups and then you put the paint out and they dry and then you have to throw them out and restart. Uh, with this you can put out your paint and keep it for quite a long period of time. Uh, comes with your lid and I've had this paint in here for probably a couple of months. And uh, once the paper kind of starts to look like this you can actually remove it and replace it and inside is a uh, sponge that you want to keep uh, moist inside. So when you have your, your paints, uh, the, uh, the wet paper will keep your uh, acrylic paints. So you just wet your paintbrush and you can go in and you have your paint color right there for you and it'll just keep staying like that rather than uh, drying out. So if you're doing figures or anything like that, uh, and you're done for the day, you can just put the lid back on and go about your business. And then when you're ready to paint again, you just take the lid off and your paint is ready to go again. And once it gets suitably um, filled up and messy, you just remove the paper and you get another uh, stay wet paper and pull that out and you do not drop it right in. Actually, what you end up doing is you take the paper and you soak it in warm water for about five, 10 minutes and then let all the excess water drip off and then you place it in your palette and now you have a clean painting palette uh, to start again for your acrylic paints and you can just put your little drops and put your mediums and whatever things that you want uh, on there and then you can just go about mixing your colors and uh, paint away and then once you're done, you just pull it out again and toss it and uh, get another one and just make sure your sponge inside is moist. So do you, do you soak the sponge first and then soak the paper as well or do you just do the paper and let the sponge do the rest? No, I, I, you go and get your sponge wet okay. and that, so you can run that under the water, just kind of wring it out so it's not absolutely saturated. So you don't need a pool of water in this thing, just no. moisture. No, just moisture and then uh, you keep your paper, like the back side of this paper is still wet. Uh, on it and it's it's designed to be wet um, and if you find the paper uh, in certain areas when it starts getting a little bit dry I just take water on my paintbrush and then I just spread a little bit of water onto the paper uh, to re-moisten it a little bit and, and wick in uh, everywhere it needs to go yeah and pretty much anywhere where there's paint I can go on and I've got paint and this has literally been there for a couple of months that I've been using this uh, and yeah, it, that is impressive. Oh yeah, and uh, I mean I've got my metallic uh, medium mixed in with the gray to make some steel that I was doing for some parts and things like that. And then you just continue mixing through. When I was doing some faces on figures, I've got my different colors: the whites, the blacks, the different skin tones, uh, the purples, and stuff like that uh, to do the different uh, shadings and that on the faces uh, with it. And then moved on to more of the uh, the vehicle colors and uh, when I was doing wood, uh, detailing, metal, stuff like that, painting the handles on uh, tools and stuff when I put them on the vehicles. So it, it's fantastic because it just, it, it keeps everything wet and uh, portable for so you. So it allows your paints like Army Painter, Vallejo and AK, it allows them to perform almost like the artist oils. They take a long time to dry. They're, they're, you mix yeah. them up. You can do custom work. You and I've got some, uh, in some of them, if you need to do that longer, you can put in a little bit of the retarder medium. 
Uh, so you can put a blob of that here. You can put other uh, mediums, like I said, the, the uh, metallic mediums, things like that. Uh, if you want to do different things with your uh, paints and you don't have to worry about, let's say, contaminating your, your pure color because you can take a little bit of that, make another little pool over here, mix other colors into it to make different shades um, and then go back and forth uh, as to what you need uh, with it, all the while having your initial color uh, in one spot and then variations of it in uh, several other places. So you have a fair amount of work area. Uh, obviously, as you can see with the number of colors that I have uh, on the palette, and there's still a little bit of room for a few other places. And then as uh, some of them basically dry up, I'll just add a little bit more of that same color or maybe a, a slightly similar color or whatever that I want to work with uh, in there. And I've used this to also make uh, uh, washes because then, you know, you can just keep thinning it right down to the consistency of a, of a wash. Uh, if you want to just do some very light highlights or uh, just to do um, to, to put like just a, a shite a, a slight uh, coloring over something this looks like a handy tool I think most modelers could use one of these I mean it's especially good for figures and things like that statues and but weathering um, I can see all kinds of potential effects like yeah. you say washes and then we talked about mediums in a previous video this is where they really come into their strength when you have the actual mediums in there and you can mix them into the paint as you go trial and error you know there's no messing up here that i can see oh yeah absolutely for any water-based paint uh, i've used it as a for figures for uh, doing groundwork for doing uh, vehicle uh, detailing uh, weathering that kind of stuff uh, to do certain washes and uh, pin lines, things like that. I, I've used my wet palettes uh, for all sorts of different um, things, painting parts. Excellent. Well, now we figured it out. Thanks to Paul. I know more about this. Hopefully you know more about this. And I think most of us should have one of these in our arsenal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.